What's going on, everybody? Welcome on into the Sports Forum MLB podcast, episode number six, the sixth and final division in the MLB. And then it is MLB opening day right around the corner. So we are looking forward to it, guys. Myself, I'm here with Anthony Hirsch. I am Riggs Tamburo. Thank you guys for tuning in. Whether you're on Spotify listening or you're on YouTube watching, we appreciate you guys. We're going to have some fun here, break down all five teams the win totals, who we see winning the division, the best pitching staff, the best hitting order, and the teams that you got to avoid here heading into 2024. So, Mr. Anthony Hirsch, I know your article is up on sportsforumdenver.com, the AL East preview and predictions. Overall take here, man, just looking at this division last year, looking at this division this year, can we expect a lot of shifting going on here? We can expect a lot of shifting going on, and you can expect just a whole lot of confidence from this division. Last season, there was only one team that finished below the 500 mark with the Boston Red Sox right there, and it wasn't by much. They finished with 78 wins, so they were right on the cusp right there. It was seeming like from the most of the season that there wasn't going to be a single team to finish, to finish below that 500 mark right there. The talent, yep. the athleticism from this division is the best in all of baseball, but be, be warned, you know, when you look at the level of competition, you know, how tough these games are going to be are going to be in season. I really do feel like that has an effect on every team that comes out of this uh, division come playoff time. As we saw last year with a team like the Orioles, yes, they dominate during the regular season, but it looks like maybe that level of competition just takes a little too much out of these teams come playoff time. We're looking mm -hmm. for a team to break the trend here this year, but – there's a couple teams that could do it, but overall, a fantastic division with a ton of offense. Yep, absolute ton of offense. And speaking of offense, I want to talk about those Baltimore Orioles here, man, because you look at this lineup and holy smokes, is it dangerous if you're an opposing pitcher here. You got Cedric Mullins leading it off there, and then you got Rushman, Henderson, Santander, O'Hearn, Mountcastle, Hayes, Urias, and Westberg is supposed to be the big nine here, man. I mean, looking at this order, how you feeling here? I don't want you to tell me if if it's not. I don't want you to tell me the team it is, but is this the best batting order in this division? I don't think it is. I don't think it is, but I think it's very – this is a tough one. Like power-wise, they're not, but I think in terms of the runs that they're able to produce, the small ball they're able to play, if you talk of just yeah. run production, I think they can be because this team understands that when they get into two strike counts, when they get deep into counts, it's about getting the ball into play. It's about getting on base. And I think that's what sets this team above, you know, the Blue Jays, the Yankees, a couple of these teams from last year, big strikeout teams, big power teams. Orioles are a little bit more consistent from that. And I think you really see that top of the lineup right there. You're not going to find anyone more consistent at a leadoff role than Cedric Mullins right there. The dude has been dominant. He was dominant last year. I see him carrying that over this year. And Gunnar Henderson, man, this dude is the real deal. Coming off a yep. unanimous AL Rookie of the Year, hitting 27 out last year. I honestly think he improves upon that number. I can see him hitting 35, 37 right here. If he's able to get that average up right there, it's very talented baseball team right here with a ton of offense. Also, look out for Mr. Jackson Holiday to be making his debut at some point during the season. Yes, I, know we got, I know he got called down. He's not making the opening day roster. I could see him coming up to the big leagues in maybe even three to four weeks following opening day. And I think this dude is going to explode once he hits an MLB roster. Overall, they are not, they don't have the best offense on paper, but they definitely have the ability to be one of the better ones in the division and in all of baseball. Do you think they mm -hmm. are the best offense in the entire division? Or do you think they might, Ooh. you know, just with talented teams in this division, do you think they might fall maybe two to three right there? You know, I definitely don't think that they are the runaway best offense in the division. That's for sure. I do. I think that they're up there. I do. And do I think that they can be the best offense? I do because they have so much young talent. That's just so promising after what we saw last year. I mean, 101 damn wins. Like, dude, like this, a young team, a team to come team to stay. And I think that they're definitely a threat. However, you're talking about one of the best offensive production divisions in all of baseball. So mm -hmm. if they were in three or four other divisions, hell yeah, they're the best offense, but I'm not a hundred percent convinced yet in this division. We're going to have to go through the rest of these and really break down who we think is the best, but let's take a look at the pitching staff, man, because now this could be argued as one of the better pitching staffs here. Corbin Burns, the ex brewer, 
projected to go 12 and nine this year, r- roughly a 3.6 ERA. I think he's under a 3.5 kind of guy. I like Corbin Burns. Dude's nasty. He's got some really good pitches. However, I've seen him get blown up a lot more often than I was seeing him get blown up his early days with the with the Milwaukee Brewers. So if he can be ace Corbin Burns, like he's supposed to be for this team, I think he's a problem. Then you got guys like Grayson Rodriguez, pretty good number two. I see him more as a number three kind of pitcher, but him and Tyler Wells, you can go ahead and mix those guys up between two and three. Then you got Dean Kremer, who I think is a slept on pitcher. And finally, Cole Irvin, who I think is a very slept on pitcher. He's in the five spot here. He could easily be on the three in the three spot on many other teams. So I think overall the depth is there in the pitching department. Do they have two or three dominant aces? No, they don't, but they have five very solid guys with a very good ace on top here. I like this pitching department. How are you feeling about it? I feel, I feel pretty good about it. They are going to be going without their ace from last year, though, and Kyle Bradish, and this dude was dominant last year. A big reason yeah. why they won so many games, especially in the division, because you know you could turn to Bradish in those situations, those big game situations. He's going to deliver you six good innings pretty routinely. Right now he's dealing yep. with a little bit of UCL, you know, uh, soreness right there. UCL is going to be this ligament right here in your elbow. That's usually the ligament that Tommy John surgery is required for. So for mm-hmm. Orioles fans, it is still very concerning. Surgery was, you know, avoided this time around. But that being said, even with these strains, you just don't really know. Even at, throughout the rehab process, we've seen many times before that guys do end up needing to get Tommy John surgery. So we'll keep an eye on that, you know, as the season progresses. Also, if you look at their dominant closer from last year, Felice Bautista, he will miss all, if, if most, if not all of the season, also oh, dealing with elbow injuries right there. If you remember last year, I mean, Dude, I, I started sweating when this dude came into games when he was playing my Yankees. I was like, yes, this sir, I bet you did. I, I thought he was the best yeah. closer in all of baseball last year. To their credit, Ooh. what do they do? Number they two. go out and they pick up Craig Kimbrell right there. And yeah. Craig Kimbrell, he's had this little bit of late uh, late career resurgence, you know, in his tenure there in Philadelphia. While Kimbrell, I think, can be very on and off, very hit or miss when he comes in late in games. Bringing him in to fill in, you know, that that gap until he's able to get back in there into that closer role. It's not a bad option right there. Someone who with MLB pedigree, with veteran and playoff experience. Overall, this pitching staff, I think, made moves to overcome the injury concerns early on in the season where they can yep. tread water long enough until Bray just comes back and maybe until they either go out and get another arm in the bullpen or until maybe Felice Bautista recovers a little bit quicker than we're all thinking and maybe makes an early recovery right there too. Do you, do you mm. feel confident about the pitching staff though? Would you have them the number one in the division? Once again, man, like, oh God, like a lot of good hitting staffs, a lot of good pitching staffs here. i tell you what, they, and this talk of the Yankees is whew, damn good bullpen, but they could have the best bullpen. Um, you mentioned the closers. You mentioned the guys coming in. I think Josh Hader is the best closer. So you said best closer. I think that who you're mentioning though, you're talking top three, top five all day long here. So I think that you got, you're on the right track here. I love the pitching staff. I love the bullpen. My two biggest things I look at when I bet on teams, who the hell's my starter and who is available in the bullpen. Those are, if I don't know those two things, I can't bet on baseball. And if I don't trust those two things, I can't bet on a baseball team. I love it here with the Orioles. I'm very confident that 75% of the time or more, if these dudes got the lead or are even tied after five innings, I feel really good about this bullpen. So I'm liking what they got here as long as they can stay healthy. You mentioned Kimbrell. He's kind of getting back in it. We'll see. Will his age catch up to him? Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I hope it doesn't. Um, but overall, man, look, let's look at the win total here. 90.5, 10 and a half games worse than last year. They had 101 wins last year. Can they get 91 this year? Or do you see them significantly dropping pretty much below the 90 mark? I'm very confident. It's so crazy to me. Like, how could you possibly put this team's win total 10 games worse than last year? It feels yeah. like it's completely bra- based on this British injury, but it's like, you go out and you get one of the most consistent aces for a team over the past 10 years in Major League Baseball in Corbin Burns mm. over there from Milwaukee. So you bring him back in. I feel very confident in this team. 
I don't think they get to 101 wins like last season, but I feel very confident that they at least get to that 90 mark. Like, come on, what are we doing here? Are you feel as confident mm-hmm. as I do right here? Or are you maybe a little bit like with the other level of competition, they could get driven down yeah. in the 80 win. Yeah. You know, I, um, I do want to point out, man, because you're, you're, t- you're talking about it. Like, man, it's going to be easy money. I tell you what, 91 wins, that's a hell of a lot of wins, man. And it, it's not, yes, is it a drop-off from last year? Sure, but they exceeded expectations last year. I think it's more of, you look at the rest of the division. You had the Yankees and the Red Sox in the bottom two. I don't think that that, that they're going to be as poor this year. The Rays, man, I'm excited to talk about the Rays because they, talk about the wild card team there with the Tampa Bay Rays. You never know what they're going to do. I, I don't know, man. I, you know what? I'm going to shit. Anthony, I don't, um, <laughs> bro, I'm, I'm, I'm lost here because it's such a good number, but like at the same time, like I feel, I feel like a fool if I say under, because like I mentioned, pitching staff is most important to me and this pitching staff's legit and the hitting staff's legit. You know what? I'm going to go over with you. I think over 90.5. I don't think they're a 100-win team. I don't think they're a 95-win team. But I do think they're somewhere between 90 and 94. Yeah, will I maybe fall one game short? Maybe. But I think that they can definitely at least get to the 90s here and compete with this division. Because even though everybody is taking a step up, this team didn't take a step back, in my opinion. So I can't just start fading them all of a sudden outside of one really important injured pitcher Who's a good pitcher, but he's not, he's not Mr. Cy Young. He's not, it's not the end of the world. It's a big deal though. So I guess we're both going to go over here, guys. Good luck to everybody on the Baltimore Orioles. If you want to take the over with us, but Anthony, let's jump on over, man, to team number two in this division, Tampa Bay Rays. You mentioned a 99 and 63 on the year last year. They had a tough run there. They started the season hot. Like they seem to always do. And then they did what they always do. And they just turn into this very mediocre baseball team right in the middle of the year. And then it comes time for the playoff push. And then they kind of rile up again, but they screw themselves in the middle of the year so bad that they don't put themselves in contention to win divisions. I don't know why. Looking at this team, looking at last year, do you think they exceeded expectations and the whole hot start thing was a complete fluke? Or do you think that that's who this team is and something happened in the middle of the year that you don't see them, you know, letting happen again? This is a tough one because I think just all the scenarios from last year, I just can't you know, play that into this year because this is a different team. I mean, they shipped off yeah. so many players here, Riggs, that like the core, the core nucleus of this team is different than it was last year. I do think it that is. some of the off the field issues, like the whole Wander Franco controversy, I think that did draw yeah. attention away from the game, you know? And you know, Wander Franco will never play a game on an MLB field but ever again. A guy that you're, you know, expecting to be your shortstop for the next 20 years does, you know, does whatever he does, and he's never going to yeah. see an MLB diamond again. Look at the pitching staff. Tyler Glass now. He's been this team's ace, one of the most solid aces in all of the AL. He got shipped off to the Dodgers. Robert Stevenson last year, if you saw this dude pitch, one of the most elite relievers, one of the most consistent relievers in the game. He is now an angel uh, Manuel Margot, longtime Ray, really big to the offensive production. He's gone. Luke Rayleigh's gone. Like, there's so many pieces from this team that's just no longer there. And then I take mm-hmm. a look at what's left. Shane McClanahan, yes, he's one of the most dominant lefty pitchers in the entire, not just AL. He's one of the most Easily. dominant lefty pitchers in the league. He's also starting yeah. the season on the IL. You get injuries, you get players leaving. There's going to be Zach Eflin start, you know, as the de facto ace for this club. Well, Eflin is a good option there. He's not a number one starter. And with the lack of offensive production from this team, I'm really struggling to see where they're going to be getting wins from. Is it going to come from the pitching staff that is took a huge step down from last year? Or is it going to be mm-hmm. offensively that also took a huge step down over the offseason? I don't really know, man. But also with this race, they're that money ball A's team of the early 2000s where it's like, yep. even if the product on the field sucks, even if their payroll is the lowest in baseball, They'll find ways to win games. So I just don't really know. This is the biggest question mark to me in the entire division. How are you feeling about the race right here? Because I just really can't wrap my head around them. I think you you used an important word in your article, and you said elite hitting staff here. And it, it is elite. Um, it, it is elite when you look at it from top to bottom. However, 
The problem is they got some really good hitters, but then they got a couple guys that simply just tarnish this hit up, this lineup. I mean, Jose Siri, sure. Is the dude good for some RBIs? Yeah, he is. And he's going to have a probably a really good year in the RBI department, but they're projecting him to hit a 0.220. I mean, you got guys like Renee Pinto there at 0.224. Like if the, if the, if the second half of this order is as good, it can perform to like the Orioles second half of the order. I think they're going to be a huge threat because the big five here, big six here, they're going to get on base. They're going to hit home runs. Mm -hmm. They're going to drive it in. But if every time pitchers know, all I got to do is get to the back three here and I'm going to send these dudes packing. That's not a good feeling if you're the Tampa Bay Rays. So their hitting staff is good, but it scares me a little bit. If I was to compare it to the Orioles, I would say it's not as good as the Orioles just mostly because top to bottom. And I just love the power of the hitters on the Orioles. These guys are more of like hitting doubles, stealing bases, you know, type of type of team more than they are just racking out going yard. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I like this team, man. And I take a look at the pitching department. I like Zach Eflin. I like Cavalli. I really liked him when he was on the guardians as well. Uh, you look over at Littell, little, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> I don't know about this kid. Tyler Alexander really liked that kid, but I could totally see him having like a very eh year. Then you got, what, how you say this guy's name? Papua. Once again, very average. Like Anthony, I'm not, I'm not there on the Rays, man. I'm not, I'm not there. I, are they a threat? Yes. Are they going to win some games that they probably shouldn't? Yes. Are they going to go on a couple runs and win five, six, seven games in a row? They very likely are but are they going to lose five, six, seven games in a row? I also think they are. So I can't get behind this, this staff too much. Hitting is okay. Pitching is okay. Neither of which though are better than the Baltimore Orioles. So when you take a look here at their win total for the year, currently sitting at 86.5. I mean, are you, or I'm sorry, not 86.5, 84.5 here for these guys. Can you see them winning 85 baseball games. Cause I'll be honest, spoiler alert. I'm out on this team. Give me the under 84.5. I think they're an 80, 81 type of team. Like, yes, there's some solid pitchers, you know, some mediocre pitchers in this staff. I think Zach Eflin is by far their best pitcher, which is scary Easily. for me going into it. I think offensively, like you have Yandy, Yandy Diaz, who is one of the best offense, you know, one of the offensive bats in all of the American league hit three thirty yep. last year, knocked out 22. But like you look at another guy like Randy Rosarena, who should be that kind of guy during the regular season in his yep. entire career, he has not performed in 162. He always performs exactly. in playoff time where you wouldn't you wouldn't know about the struggles too for late. the last 162 too games. Late. But yeah, too late there. If the Rays don't make the postseason, then he doesn't even have the chance to showcase this playoff monster that kind of lies within. Yeah. But um, yeah, dude, I just don't see it coming from this team. Like, there's so many question marks for these guys. They might be able to get there, but right now I am not sold on this team. I think they have a chance to maybe finish right there with the Red Sox right around the bottom of the division, kind of similar mm -hmm. to last year. But what do you think this team has a shot to get above that number? Uh, I know you're saying that you're not sold on these guys, but the race no, philosophy of baseball where they put winning product on the field, we've seen a lot more question marks from a race team heading into a season where they have finished a lot better. That's the one thing I will say. But do you see them finishing below that 85 number right there? Under, under, under. Book it, folks. Put it in. 84 and a half. It's just too high. This baseball team gets – they're more hyped than they are talented. And that's my problem with them. We always want them to be good. We want them to do well. Are they going to beat the Yankees a couple times? Probably. Are they going to beat the Orioles? Probably. Are they going to – yes, they're going to be good. And they're going to be a threat. And they could completely shut me up here. And this pitching staff could deliver way better than I think. And they could go on a run. But the back end of the order is going to screw them. I'm telling you right now. And the biggest thing is, these are the kind of guys where opposite of the Orioles, when they get to the late in the game and they're down a run or they're tied in a ball game, I don't trust this baseball team to come out on top the way that I do trust Baltimore to do so. So I have to go under 84.5 here. Sorry, Tampa Bay. I hope uh, low key. I feel bad, but I, I kind of hope this team isn't very good because when this team is bad, that usually means the rest of this division is pretty good. And for that reason, even if these guys are in the 75, 
ish win mark. That means we're going to have a hell of a tight race here in this division. So I'm going to say under once again, I think if I had to say an exact number, I'm going 81 wins for the Tampa Bay Rays, mostly because they can't close baseball games. That's my big thing here with these guys. So we'll see what happens, man. But I do want to jump on over here and talk about the next team that finished third in this division last year. That is the Blue Jays, 89 and 73. I'll tell you what's interesting, man. We always want this baseball team to be good. And we look at this roster and we're like, holy crap. How do they not kill people? But they have the same problem the Rays have. They don't clutch baseball games. And I don't know what it is. Sometimes the hitting order, they don't get on base for five, six, seven innings. You look at the power in this hitting order and it doesn't make sense. I struggle with this baseball team. I'd love to hear your overall breakdown here on the Blue Jays. Looking at last year, looking at this year, how do you feel? Was last year just a funk or do you think 89 wins was about as good as they could have done? Because I feel like they could have been a 95, 96, 97 type of team. I think they could have, but I've been saying that they could have for the past three to four seasons. It's like ever since Vlad Guerrero came in and they started building this young group of talent, everyone's been saying, oh, watch out for the Blue Jays. This is their time. They're about to make the World Series yep. run. It's been about three, four years removed from people first starting to say that. And I haven't seen anything from this team. Like it's came mm -hmm. to the point now where it's either you nut up or you shut up and you put some wins yep. on the board, you get to the playoffs and you make a deep playoff push. That being said, I think it's, I think that the ownership and I think that the front office has a lot of balls because they bring back the same group of guys. They oh, practically didn't make a single change in the off season. It's going to be the same young group of guys. It's going to be Boba shit. It's going to be Vlad jr. And for, you know, the offense overall, they did underperform last year. I think they underperformed even more so than they usually do. If you look overall, they finished 14th in the league in runs per game. Well, that yep. might not sound too bad. This is a team that was top three in the league for like three years running. They're one of the top yep. offenses, and they just don't have the pitching staff to keep up with, you know, some of these top offenses in the AL where they do need to have their offense absolutely firing to keep up in some of these games. And I also think that last year they got a little bit derailed by the whole Alec Manoa situation. Like, you're just not going to see that monumental collapse from a guy who's coming off of, you know, getting some Cy Young nods, you know, being kind of considered to be one of the best pitchers in the entire AL to literally playing rookie ball last year. You don't see that happen every season. I don't think that's going to happen. I think Kevin Gosman's going to step up big time for these guys and be that ace once again. I think he's going to get some Cy Young nods here at the end of the year. Overall, I think the offense does get back to some, you know, form of dominance. I don't know if it's going to be the same as it was like, two, three years ago, but the for the talent and the product on paper, they need to start replicating it on the field because this is just way too talented of a team to continually fall short of these lofty expectations. How do you feel about this team, though? I know you've been high on the Blue Jays in a couple years past. Do you still feel like the window is open for these guys? Anthony, at what point do you cut your losses? You know, mm -hmm. at what point do you say, you know what? Y'all want to keep we're... putting the same damn product on the field. I'm done with it then. Because, yes, they're trusting. You know what it reminds me of? It's the MLB version of the Dallas freaking Cowboys. It's the, well, we're good enough to win it all. We have the team. We have the talent. We have the roster. We got the big hitters. We get, we're paying all this money. But yet, you don't win. Why? Because you don't make changes. It, I, I could go off on the Cowboys right now, but, you know, this is a baseball show, so I'm going to not do that. But like overall, man, like I just feel like, sure, on paper, they don't need to do anything to the roster. But at the same time, like at what point do you say, okay, what we're doing is not working. So what else do we have to do here? I don't know. It's tough because like, once again, like you're, you're bashing a team that is better than 80% of the other teams on paper. And it's not even freaking close but yet they don't win. So I don't know if it's bad luck. I don't know if it's because they're just in a sickening division. I don't, I don't know what it is, man, but I'll tell you what, you just mentioned Kevin Gosman as a, as a Cy Young candidate, you know, they haven't projected in the number five spot of the pitchers, which is absolutely crazy to me. Cause this dude stepped yeah. up. He was like the ace last year. Like if the blue Jays would have been nowhere near 89 wins. If Kevin Gosman was not there for this team. And if you, you, if you saw you him weird. last year, it was like every time he was yeah. on the mound, you knew they had a shot to win the game. Well, he is also projected with the best ERA on the team, which I'm just, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they just 
haven't made it official and moved him up the roster yet. I don't know, but it has him projected at fifth overall. 12 and 9 on the year, so the best record pitching, the best ERA with a 353, and the most innings, uh, the second most innings pitch with 181, only behind Chris Bassett. So I don't know. I think he's going to move up. I don't see him anywhere past the third spot. I mean, maybe he's not the number two somehow, but I do think Jose Barrios, mm, what a tough pitcher to call because talk about boom or bust at its finest. Mm. That dude either pitches a freaking gem or he gets rocked. And that's my problem with, it's kind of like Kyle Freeland for the Rockies. If I was to compare it yeah. to somebody, you just don't know what you're going to get out of him. Um, and so for that reason, I like Barrios. I like Chris Bassett used to be on the Oakland A's. Thank God for him. He's on a halfway capable baseball team. Now he's a great pitcher. Kikuchi, another good pitcher, but Holy smokes. Talk about getting blown up. That is the, to me, he's the biggest liability in this pitching Absolutely. staff, just because man, when he's off, man, I mean, you're talking like four or five runs in the opening inning kind of off, like. Just it's because he's he's a Japanese pitcher, he's coming over with the splitter. And the splitter, when it's on, it's one of the hardest pitches to hit in all of baseball. But when you hang a splitter, it is one of the yes. easiest pitches to hit. Like it is a floating yes. 75 mile an hour fastball. Mm -hmm. And if you watch last year, the amount of times that he left it floating, you 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 you're just like, bro, what are you doing? Like Dude, it looked like Masahiro Tanaka all those years ago for the Yankees. Like it was like I was bringing back freaking like flashbacks for me. I was like, oh no, yeah, not man. Again. I don't know, man. I mean, Francis, decent pitcher, but I mean, look, I ain't going to lie, dog. Like this, we're going to talk about the other ones, but this is definitely a top pitching staff in this division. No matter what it's top two, it could be considered number one, uh, but there's a big boy team coming up here in just a minute. And I know that uh, some people are going to want to look at that staff. Um, <laughs> but overall, man, look, I like the pitching staff for the Blue Jays. The, the, the bats to me of the three teams we've talked about so far, very comparable to the Baltimore Orioles, definitely above the Tampa Bay Rays, no matter what. You're talking, once again, big hitters, big power. The difference with these guys and the Orioles is I think the speed on the Blue Jays is even better. The stealing bases is going to be better. They just they get through the hitting order better, I think, uh, than a lot of other teams. However, since they're such a power order, they go three up, three down way too often. Way too often. And and that's a big problem with the whole 89 win thing is why did they not get to 95 or 100? Because they had so many times that their big bats went cold. If they can avoid that, they're going to be okay. But that's a hell of a lot easier said than done, especially when you don't change anything. So like, I don't know. But Anthony, let's take a look here, man, at this win total for the season. 86.5. So a little bit below what it was at last year. I think it's a very fair number. Are you willing to say 87 plus here? I am willing to say that because I just think that offensively, this is just too good of a group of guys to put up the numbers they did last year. If you take, we'll just take Vlad, Vladdy, you know, in his own right, he hit 264 last year and only hit 26 home runs. When this dude is on, when this dude is healthy, this is a 300 hitter that has the ability to hit 40 plus home runs in a season. I think he gets back yeah. to that point. And I think like strictly, if you take that alone, him getting back to where Vladdy Jr. can really play baseball, I think that alone has him right around the same win total right there. I think the pitching staff is elite, and I think offensively, if they're able to cut down on strikeouts and start to prioritize getting runners on base, this team's going to be right up there competing with the top spot in the division here, Riggs. I love the over right here for these guys. Ooh, all right, all right. I'll tell you what. I expected 89.5. I expected the last year number. So at 86.5, I feel pretty good about this. If they can't win 87 games, Anthony, first of all, they can't win the division. It's not going to happen. And honestly, yeah. they might not get second. They might not make the playoffs if they don't win 87 games. So I have to go with the over here because we just talked about it. Phenomenal pitching staff, phenomenal batting order. There's zero excuses for them not to hit the over, but approach with caution because of what they've done the past couple years. So we're both going to go over folks. This is going to be a squad ride. So I hope you guys can ride along with us. We are going over 86.5 wins here for the Baltimore or, or for the Toronto Blue Jays here in 2024. So should be a good time. Now, Anthony Hirsch has done everybody the favor of taking off that Yankees hat because there's no bias over here. However, 
His team is now in the building. You're looking at his stadium here in the background. Anthony, your New York Yankees. Before we get into the batting order and the pitching staff and all that, looking at your article, I know you had a lot to say about these fellas. And folks, you guys can also see what Anthony said in deeper detail, sportsforumdenver.com. Click on that AL East article under MLB. But your take on 2023, your take on the offseason moves heading into 2024, are you feeling good as a Yankees fan this time around? couple things about 2023 this team got off to the hottest start in all of baseball you know the first month and a half of the season I mean they look truly dominant then kind of following that Aaron Judge injury like there was just a mirage of injuries that derailed this team's season if you guys know like in the middle parts of the season during the dog days of summer the Yankees were like the number one worst team in baseball in terms of record they were not not anything else in record one of the worst teams like worse than the Rockies over that span Kind of crazy to think about, but this team legitimately was just bad. But they go into the offseason, and they make as many moves that you could probably make to make your team legit again. They go out. They had Aaron Hicks freaking just filling up left field last season. Aaron Hicks did not do yep. a thing. One of the worst defensive, offensive left fielders in the game. Who do you get Ooh. to replace? Yeah, Mr. Shots Juan. Fired. Shots oh, fired. Oh, yeah. Dude, he's terrible. He was so bad. Yeah, he's not very and good. He's not very you good. You go back and look at the game clip last year if you're doubting the fact that Aaron Hooks was atrocious for the Yankees. You can go yeah. back and then you guys can come at me after that. But moving on right <laughs> here, you're getting Juan Soto. And if you don't know Juan Soto, you're not watching Major League Baseball because this dude – Yeah, you've been hiding under a rock. He's the best – I think he's the best overall player in the big leagues. I know last year average might have been down wow. a little bit. His on-base percentage, you know, sliding him into a one-two spot right there is a best in all the major league baseball. He takes more walks than anyone because pitchers are just so freaking afraid to pitch to him, as yeah, I would be. Sure. Too. I would want to. I, I would, would want to leave too. Him around that dude. I think nope. him going to come in is going to really bolster the offense. You're getting Aaron Judge back healthy. He will be starting opening day. He was healthy. Started his last couple preseason games looking really good. The biggest thing for this team moving forward is going to be the injury bug. They're getting Carlos Rodon back. If you guys forget what Carlos Rodon can do for a team, he is the nastiest lefty pitcher, at least when he, in his tenure with the Giants. He was the nastiest lefty in all the NL. Like, you know it. You know it. You, as a Diamondbacks fan right there, you would hate oh, I know. Mr. Rodon. Uh, but Rodon will be coming back fully healthy. He's going to be joined by nasty nasty Nestor Cortez with that nasty mustache right there at the top of the rotation. Garrett Cole, however, will be out until at least mid-May. Again, really scary because he's dealing with that UCL ligament right there. Again, he avoided surgery for now, but there's still a lot of time between now and mid-May to see what that rehab looks like. So that's the one biggest piece of concern for Yankees fans out there is you might be going a, a good part of your season without your reigning Cy Young winner in Garrett Cole. Mm. But overall, man, first of all, I, yeah, no, go, ahead. go ahead. Um, I, I was just gonna say, man, I, I'm glad that you brought up that boy Nestor Cortez because talk about a freaking dog of a pitcher. I love Nestor Cortez. Uh, with that said, Anthony, I'm trying to figure out why this team had 82 wins and 80 losses. I'm trying to figure it out because it's kind of like the Blue Jays every single year. I look at this team and I go, damn, that's a team I don't want to deal with. They got fourth, fourth. You should be embarrassed to be a Yankees fan, Anthony. Even my Pittsburgh Steelers went to the damn playoffs. The Yankees got fourth? Like, come on, bro. Look, I don't give a damn if someone got hurt. I don't, I don't care. You're the Yankees. Look at the bankroll. Look at the roster. Look at the coaching. Aaron Boone, what a dog. Like, such a good baseball team, man. But why? Why are they struggling? I don't because, know. Because However, seven out of nine starters were hurt at one point last year, and they were legitimately fielding a AAA roster. What's like to that, make that, me that, think that's not going to happen again? What's so they got a bunch of big dudes that get paid too much money and need need some? Uh, I'm gonna I'm not going to use some bad terminology here, but they might need some cream for those wounds, man. Like, what what's going on here? Like, are, are we just going to get hurt every year? They completely overhaul the training staff where they can play clear house in the training staff, bring back new guys. I get the Garrett Cole stuff, but you take a look at John Carlos Stanton, one of the most injury prone players in all of baseball. He dropped yeah. about 40 pounds going into spring training this season. Like he looks like a freaking needle. Like it's crazy. He better because he's slow as hell. I, I, 
I do think that his training staff, I think they're taking player health a little bit more seriously than the last Good. guys that were in there. And I do think that's going to pay off, you know, in the season. We'll see how this Garrett Cole thing comes out. But mm. the fact that Aaron Judge was able to recover from an early oblique strain, I've seen Judge miss months from oblique strains. And this time he only missed about two weeks. And you know they're going to be taking their time early on in the season. I know it's a really small sample size, but I do think that the tr- that this new training staff should be better, hopefully, than last year's. I mean, they can't be much worse, right? When's the last time you guys won a World Series? I'm just, I'm just, just a question. It's just a question. That's, that's all it is. Right. Long time ago, right? So, right? Okay. So here's the thing, man. Why? Why? I Every year. Like, you can go ahead and tell me, oh, injury bug. What happened the 10 years before that, Anthony? I don't know. Farm system? <laughs> Dog, look, dog, look. I'm going to go ahead and let last year go. Okay, let's jump into 2024 here. Wipe it all away. Wipe it all away. Looking at this batting order. You got Torres, Soto, Judge, Rizzo, Stanton, Verdugo, Volpe, Cabrera, and Trevino. Dogs, okay? Great hitting order here. Like it always is, folks. So hopefully something doesn't go wrong. Pitching staff, Nestor Cortez, the ace. Carlos Rodon, I love that you pointed him out. Phenomenal pitcher. Could be the ace on many other teams. So really looking forward to seeing him do what he does here. Marcus Stroman, another dog coming over from the Cubs. Loved him as a Cub. I think I'm going to like him here. If he can pitch his game and actually give us what he does, Clark Schmidt, slept on pitcher. When he's on, looks phenomenal. And finally, Luis Gill, another guy that I think is a good pitcher when he's on here. So. I like this pitching staff. I It's very comparable to the Blue Jays pitching staff. I will say, I think ace for ace, it's damn near identical. And uh, it, it's really identical here. I think both four and fives on both sides are really good. I think all three guys on both teams could probably be aces on some other bad teams. So I like the staff. I like the hitting order. I can't point out what's wrong with the Yankees, Anthony. I can't. But I also can't avoid history, and history tells me something's going to go wrong with this baseball team. So that brings me to my next point for this team of one, I trust them and I like them on paper, but I don't know if I can trust them come game time. I mean, last they didn't even make it to the playoffs. Why am I supposed to think that they're going to have a shot to win the division? Well, you mentioned Juan Soto. That's great. You look at the win total here, man. 82 wins last year. They got to bank 10 more of them to hit the over this year. 91.5 is the Juan Soto effect going to come into play here. Absolutely. I have them hitting the over right here, but there's one thing that we're forgetting about this Yankees team that has been so absent from teams since the 2009 World Series team. This team has a mm-hmm. young core, and it's a really good young core. If you guys don't know, the Martian, Jason Dominguez, when he came the into Martian. the big leagues last September – Dude, the dude freaking lit it up. He has power, like legitimate power to all sides of the field. I think it's a better opposite field of a power hitter, which if you know across Major League Baseball is one of the most rare phenoms to happen. Like you don't, that does not happen. Another mm-hmm. name where he has more power the opposite way, guy like Juan Soto. A lot of comparisons in their swing and the way that they're able to drive the baseball, the way they're able to see the pitch out of pitcher's hand. Also, Spencer Jones, man, this dude is going to make an impact in the outfield at some point during the season. He has made so many strides over the past couple of years. I think once he gets in, he could be a sleeper rookie of the year candidate right there. But Clark Schmidt's Mm. another guy. This is going to be his real first true experience as a starter. He's had a lot of experience in Major League Baseball, but the dude's still so young. Like He's young enough to still be an MLB's prospect pipeline. I think this dude's going to really surprise some people in that fourth spot there. It's like now, yes, now they have reinforcements in case one guy does does get injured because they do have a legitimate farm system. That's the one thing that I think is so different from this Yankee team from teams before, and that's another reason why I have them with the over right here. I do know it's a stretch, though. It's 10 more games. Do you think they can get there, or do you think they're going to be somewhere in that 80 mark, maybe high 80s mark, maybe still being competitive within the division, but not one of the top dogs up there? Mm. You know, man, um... (laughs) Uh, Okay, so one thing I don't like about this win total, though, is the fact that the Blue Jays are at 86.5, 91.5. You're asking me for four more wins. Are they four wins better than the Blue Jays? Let me just start with that question. 
Do you think truly, truly, are they four wins better than them? Yes, they are. Offensively okay. alone, they are. Because just okay. with the struggles of Toronto last season, I think that top the top five of the Yankees lineup is the best five on paper. Granted, this is all on paper. We still need to see product on the field. But on paper, yeah. this is the best top five, I think, in Major League Baseball. Mm. Wow, the best top. Oh, jeez. Jeez. We have, um, we have a lineup with Aaron with Aaron Judge and Juan Soto. I think you you could te- keep those two alone and say that's the best top four, top five in baseball. I think a major major X factor is somebody you already talked about, and that's Stanton. If Stanton did lose weight, if he is moving better, if he can steal a freaking base once in a blue moon, if the dude really starts to contribute to this order, I agree with you. They are going to be an on paper, they're the best team. And the Blue Jays are number two. I don't know if they're four games better than them, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go over the win total here because the fact that they are due. And I think the one, so you can't walk them all, Anthony. That's the catch. That's the big mm-hmm. thing about Soto is go ahead. Go ahead and walk the big two, the big three. And then if Stanton's firing, see ya. Grand slam, three three run home run city is going to start happening out here. So That's why I call it a cleanup boys, hitter, folks. Yes, if the boys stay healthy, I agree with you. I'm going to go over here because the fact that I think the winner of this division, in my opinion, is going to be pretty much a race to 95. That's kind of what I'm looking at here. So I think these guys are in contention. I'm going to give them the over. If they avoid the injury bug, if Nestor Cortez does his thing, and if these two big dogs that you're seeing on the screen, Judge and Soto, are healthy throughout the year and we get some pickup from Stanton, I will agree with you. It's very hard to look the other way and say under on this base. They're just, they're too stacked. So we're all, we're both going to go over here, guys. Squad riding on the over. I know Anthony's happy with that one. I can't, uh, you know, I really wanted to dog him there and say, ain't no way I'm going over. But I wanted, folks, I tried. I tried. Did you guys hear me for the last 10 minutes? I tried to bash this team and I still went over. So, you know, but I go, you want to go over with them every year. And they burn yeah, me every yeah, year. Yeah, so, yeah. Can you imagine right. being a fan, dude? You know, you know miserable no. the last like 10 no. years have been? It's been insane. And that's why I was considering the under because I was like, I don't want to count 92 wins for this team. I'm for good sure. on that, bro. I'll take the under and I'll make them earn it. Um, but right. I'm going to take a shot here with you um, just because they're just, they're just too stacked here. The only thing that scares me about it is no one else in this division's win total is at 90. And so I kind of feel like it's such a good division that they might get watered down because of their own division, but outside of their division, I think they're going to absolutely murder people. And that's the big catcher. And I don't think the Tampa Bay Rays can beat this baseball team. That's another thing here. I think the Orioles can and the Blue Jays can, but I think the Rays are in trouble. There's one thing. I actually think the Yankees against the Rays, that's a little bit of their kryptonite. Like the Rays are just so different from the Yankees in so many ways. I think it actually plays in favor of the Rays. Historically, over the past, say, five years, the Yankees own Baltimore. But more importantly, Aaron Judge owns Baltimore. The dude just turns into another freaking like being when he goes into there in Camden Yards. Like the dude cannot – he refuses not to hit a home run when he's at that stadium. He owns yeah. Baltimore, and that's the one thing. Like in those games, I have to give the edge to the Yankees because of the dominance that I cut. Not just Judge, Stan also owns the Orioles. Like for some reason, the offensive numbers from the Yankees when they play Baltimore just skyrocket. So it might not be the same case this year, but it has been over the pa- over the past about five years. So I'm going to carry that into this season as well. Mm. Fair. And, and you know what? I mean, kryptonite, whatever, rivalry, whatever. People are still mind blown when I don't, I hate to relay this to football again, but like every time my Steelers beat the Ravens, people are like, why the hell are they beating the Ravens? Like what? But it's just a thing. It's like when you have someone's number, you have their number and it is what it is. However, on paper, the Rays got no business beating the Yankees. The bullpen, the hitting order, the starters, the coaching, the management, the money. I mean, it's, there's nothing, there's nothing there. That's going to make me go raise. Now, if you guys get swept by the raise one time, that's an absolute joke and it better not happen. If you're going to lose two, one in a series, shit happens once in a while, it's going to happen. But overall, I will not be surprised if their first 
three, four games against the Rays, they win them all. I, I think they should win them all, personally, in my opinion. So we'll see what happens there. But one more team, my man, that we got to talk about here. The one in the very back, Anthony's second favorite team in all of baseball, the Boston Red Sox. Let me ask you, man, looking at 2023, they were, quite frankly, not to use the word bad, but they're, they're the best bad team. They're the best bad team in baseball. They're the best number five, 78 wins. And you get fifth place. I mean, damn, like you could go to a lot of other divisions and you're third all day long in other divisions. Mm -hmm. Really? They're only four games worse than the New York Yankees. Most of that is because they did struggle a bit at home. They're the only team in this division, not to be positive at home, 39 and 42 at home, 39 and 42 on the road. So no home field advantage for these guys looking at the Red Sox. I know you don't like these guys, but take that out of the fact here. For the average public person, how should they view the Boston Red Sox in 2024? Completely unbiased, still not very good. I still see this as being a bottom team in the division. And for mm -hmm. a couple of reasons, like, you know, there's a couple of glowing things, you know, at the end of last season where it's like, these are areas of your team that you need to correct. You need to correct them right freaking now. One of it is yeah. starting pitching. They had one of the worst starting pitching rotations in all of baseball. Combined mm -hmm. four four two ERA last year, not very good. The only move they made over the offseason was they acquired Lucas Giolito. But hold on a second, yep. folks. His Giolito will not pitch in 2024. Yes, he has been dominant at points in his career, but he is recovering from a partially torn. Again, it's that UCL, baby. We're going to be talking about it all day here. But uh, he's partially torn UCL. He will be out for the year. Overall, this team – is not poised to win this year, but that's not necessarily their intention. They're going to be showing a lot of prospects. There's going to be a lot of young guys who are getting opportunities for this team because they know that they're building for something a little bit more. They're trying to – it's not quite a rebuild, but it's almost like this mini rebuild that they're going to be taking one year to see what they have in the farm system. And they also need to have a resurgence from a couple of guys. Like one foremost is Trevor Story. Trevor Story, ever since he's been donning, you know, the red and navy or the blue and yellow occasionally, um, yeah. he's just not – he hasn't been the same guy. He hasn't played 100 games in a season one, you know, one time. Even when he's been in, like last year he hit two – like three marks above the Mendoza line, hit 203. He hasn't done anything for this Red Sox team. And then when I look at the other move they go out and get, and they get Tyler O'Neill. It's like, yes, he has been good. And when he's on the field, he can be a very valuable guy. But in his first six years in Major League Baseball – the dude has only played 100 games in a season one time. So another injury-prone player right there. I don't know, man. There's just so many question marks from this team. <laughs> I, don't steroids. That they, I, <laughs> but I don't think they want. I don't think they're ready to win this year. And I also think that getting a guy like Lucas Chialito, who you're like, okay, this will be our ace in 2025. I feel like that's more proof as to the fact that they're building for 2025 and not so much this 2024 campaign right here. I don't know, man. Do you think these guys can still be competitive? I mean, obviously, there's still a lot of big names like Rafael Devers, oh. you know, a bunch of big offensive yeah. names. Do you think these guys can be competitive, or do you think it's going to be that kind of rebuild year? We'll see about – we'll see next offseason if they're really coming to play. Will they be competitive? Yes. Are they a threat to the division? No. And once again, they could go to other divisions and be a good baseball team – but they have drawn a bad stick here. They have to get through the Orioles, the Rays, the Yankees, and the Blue Jays, brother. Like, being the fifth team out of those teams isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, I look at the hitting order. I actually really like it, if I'm being honest with you. I like Duran. I love Devers. Trevor Story, shout out to the Rockies. I like that guy. He's not performing really right now for the Red Sox. I expect a lot better out of Trevor Story, but they're projecting him a point two three eight again. If that's the best this dude's got, they're in trouble there in the third spot. Then you got Cassis. I like O'Neal. I like his RBIs. He hits home runs, but you mentioned he's injury prone. There's no physical way that this guy plays throughout the entire year. He just won't. There's going to be two, probably two four to six week spans that the dude's out for something. A back injury, a labrum, a shoulder. Uh, I don't know. Um, when he's on the field though, Phenomenal baseball player. I think he's very good. Yoshida, really good hitter. Super slept on here in this batting order. Not a lot of people talk about this guy, but absolutely, in my opinion, could be the third best hitter 
on this team this year if he does his thing. And then overall, Rafaela Valdez Wong, decent back end of the order here, much better than I think like the Blue Jays back end of the order. So that's good for these guys. Here's my problem with this baseball team. The pitching sucks and it just sucks. And the names aren't bad. Um, Bayo, Pavetta, Crawford, Whitlock, and Huck. I like them. No one's projected under a 4.15 ERA, and that's Garrett Whitlock. Overall, the bullpen, atrocious. Cost them, I don't know how many games last year that their, bull, that their bullpen cost them. Games that we see the Red Sox either scoring double digits or allowing double digits. There's The pitching is just not good, and they basically have to score like six, seven, eight runs a game to put people away, and that's a problem with this team, especially in this division, dog. Like you can't, you can't let big dog hitters run into, you know, bullpen guys that are getting smacked up. Like you're never going to beat them. And so I'm struggling because they're a good baseball team. But if for me, it's the bullpen. If the bullpen doesn't lock down, I don't see them winning more than 78 games again. I just, I physically can't get there, but Let's take a look here, man, at these guys' win total for the year. Once again, 78 and 84 last year. They are 77.5, Anthony. Can they be the exact same baseball team or better or with the whole division improving? Are these boys in trouble? I think these are the guys that kind of get left out with, the, like you're saying, a bunch of the improvements from this division. The Red Sox are the one team that is kind of saying, okay, we understand that Guys are making moves around us, but we feel very confident and at least giving our youth a shot this year. And I think that's also apparent in the fact that they've pretty much given Brian Bello the nod to be their number one starter. You look at his numbers yep. last year, nothing blew you away. He went 12 and 11 uh, north of a four ERA, but he's a younger pitcher who they really do feel like could be the ace of the squad for years to come. So they're going to give him the faith in that. And that at least earns you know, a little tip of the cap that they're have, you know, they have enough respect for him. And the fact that they are trying to give these younger guys at least a shot this year to see what their talent is. That being said, you factor in everything. I just can't see this team getting to 78 wins, 77 wins, yeah. even 75 wins, honestly. I don't see the overall oh. division being as good as it was last year. And I think that the wins have to get chipped away from somewhere. And I think it gets chipped away from the bottom right here with the bottom team. I could see the Red Sox having like a 70 win, maybe even like 68 win season. But in reality, it's not that bad for them because they know they're building for 2025. Do you think these guys could get above that number or is that just a little too high for you? You know, man, the batting order is going to pull their weight. Absolutely. But the pitching staff is going to burn this team and they're going to burn them the entire year. And with the Yankees getting better, with the Orioles, I mean, the Orioles can't get better. They're not going to get better. They're going to get worse, which technically leaves the door open for these guys. But at the same time, like, I I don't know. Like I said, I think the Rays are worse, if not the same. The Orioles are a little bit worse, but they're still phenomenal, and the Yankees are better. I think these guys are in the upper 70s, but by upper 70s, they might be 76, 77. They might not be 79, 80 type of thing. So I'm going to go under here because, first of all, if they lose any of their top two pitchers, say 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 goodbye. They're, they're winning 68 baseball games. Um, but I just, I think their bats are going to do enough to easily give them 65, 70 wins, but what's going to burn this baseball team. And I'm telling you right now, folks, they are going to be in position to win about 85 baseball games, but their bullpen is going to burn them. They're going to give up too many late. And with that, just like Anthony said, that 80, that what could be 85, they're going to let 10 games slip through their fingers. They're going to win 75, 76 games here. And we are both going to squad ride the under on the Boston Red Sox. Anthony couldn't be happier as a Yankees fan, but seriously, guys, that's no bias. They're just not going to be a very good baseball team. It just is what it is. So, Anthony, before we get out of here, my man, let's take a look here at the division winners. Yankees and Orioles exactly tied here at plus 185 to win the division. Blue Jays at plus 400. Rays at plus 550. And the Red Sox all the way back there at 17 to one looking at the big two plus 185 first of all do you think it's right that they're exactly tied and then second of all between the blue jays and the rays if someone was to steal it who would it be 
I think it is probably right that they're about the same. And I would honestly put my money a little bit more towards the Orioles because even though the Yankees have had, you know, some postseason runs here in recent history, they almost never win the division. Like, it's the weirdest thing. They are always the wild card team. No matter yeah. what, they're always one or two games here or there at the end of the season where they just never finish with the crown. So I do, I would, you know, put my money with the Orioles right there. Out of the blue, you know, with the Blue Jays and the Rays right there, I would have to put my money with the Blue Jays because I know what I'm getting yeah. from the Blue Jays. There's just so many, so much I don't know from what the Rays product's going to be when, you know, come opening day. I just can't put my money right there right now. When I look at the Blue Jays team, I think they do have a legitimate starting rotation. And at least on paper, their offense can do a whole lot of damage. So I think that would be the one team. If you're looking for some dog in this division, I'd be looking for Toronto right here. But I've also been saying that for the past freaking five years. So maybe tread a little bit cautiously right here. If you had to pick a dog to be coming out of this thing, would you give it maybe to the Rays right here? Anthony, uh, first of all, for me, it ain't even close. It's the Blue Jays over the Rays. The Rays, I'm not on the Rays. I'm going to probably eat my words in the first 20 weeks. Everyone's going to be like, well, Riggs, they're 17-3. and three. How do you feel now? I don't give a damn because they're going to choke. I don't care about that baseball team. They're not good enough top to bottom. The depth is not there. The thing about the Blue Jays, they aren't going to just be happy in third place. They're coming to win this whole damn thing, and I will not be surprised at all when they are the team that wins 90 games and they're the team that wins the division. So value-wise – the Blue Jays are my favorite pick. Now, you didn't say the Yankees. You said the Orioles. I'm actually going to go against you here. I'm going to go with the New York Yankees. And when we're having this show in 2025, if the Yankees burn me, folks, I'm never saying it again. So don't fuck with me here. But Yankees, I said they're going over 90.5. I also said the Orioles are going to go over that 80 80- 6.5 or whatever it was. So I do think they're both right there, but I, technically if I said over on the Yankees and they had the highest win total, I think I have to go Yankees here. And mostly because I like the hitting department. I like the pitching staff. Their bullpen was top three for damn near the entire season last year. It's going to be head to head. The odds makers nailed it. I feel like I'm taking the bait because everybody sees Juan Soto and Aaron judge, and they're just going to slam the Yankees. But at the same time, guys, on paper, they should win the division. So I'm going to go Yankees. Anthony's going to go Orioles. I know he's hoping that I'm right in this spot. Um, but low key, my favorite pick is the Blue Jays. Just because at plus what? Plus 400. I would love to take a shot on the guys that I think are also. It's going to be 94 wins, 92 wins, 89 wins. And then I think the Rays are in that 81 range. And then I think the Red Sox are in that 75, 76 range. So that's how I see it. Anyone could win this thing of the big three should be a lot of fun, but guys, that is it for us over here at the AL East from the sports forum, Anthony Hirsch at Anthony Hirsch, 23, myself at rig sports talk, please guys. If you don't follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, wherever else you guys are, uh, please follow us at Denver forum. You're going to see our sweet little logo there. Uh, if you look us up, so please hit that follow button. And then on YouTube, uh, subscribe to us at the sports forum. If you head to our website, sportsforumdenver.com, got it on the screen right there for you. For those that are watching on YouTube, uh, guys go over there, click that click here to enter our giveaway button. We're always doing ticket giveaways, cash giveaways, Jersey giveaways, whatever it might be. All you got to do is click that button, head over to our YouTube and subscribe. So we appreciate you guys. That is it for us. We have done all six divisions heading into 2024. It's going to be a lot of fun. Anthony Hirsch and I are going to be covering baseball the entire year for you guys. So make sure you keep following us. Stay tuned. We always want to hear from you guys as well. So if you see that we're live on YouTube or on Twitter or wherever you're watching, please pop in, say, hey, can you guys talk about this game? Or what do you guys think about that? We always want your guys' feedback. We are the forum at the end of the day. So we always want the public to say whatever they feel, guys. So one more time. That's it for us over here. Enjoy the 2024 season. It's going to be a hell of a time. This has been the Sports Forum Podcast, AL East. See you guys for 2025.